Hi everyone, today we're going to do question number 238, product of array except self. I'm going to first start off with reading the question, showing my thought process of analyzing the question, uh, do a graphical representation of the possible solutions, and then we're going to code the most optimal solution. Okay, so stick with it. All right, so let's read the question. Given an array nums, so that's basically the name of that array, of n integers, right, where n is greater than 1, meaning that the nums array that you're receiving, well, it's going to be bigger than 1, right? Your objective is to essentially to return an array and call it output, such that at the output at that position i is equal to the product of all elements of the array, of the input array, nums except for at the same position of i is number right so what does that actually mean you know uh you're given a input array and you're expected to have an output of an array right um and for my output array at each position um it should reflect the product of all the remaining uh elements that it's not itself um from the input array so what does that actually mean? Well, let's look at the example. Uh, in this example, we have one, two, three, four, simple enough. Um, and at position zero, right? All it is is the product of two times three times four. Uh, and you look at position one, all it is is your position, your product of one times three times four. And at eight, it's effectively one times two times four and so on and so forth, right? So we understand this is like, you know, simple multiplication type of question. You know, if you uh, multiply things except for itself, sounds simple enough, right? Um, now, if you think about multiplication, you know, what you, it, it's usually its counterpart would be its division, you know, because if you multiply something by two, you can divide it by two and you get that same number, right? So intuitively, you might think, oh, simple. I might just go and look at everything uh, and multiply it. And then at each index, I'll just, you know, divide it by that particular number right that would work however we have a condition here and this is why i always emphasize on pay attention and reading the full question before coding uh, because it's important um, so there's a there's a note on the bottom here saying note please solve it without division right meaning that we cannot solve this problem with division and in o of n time complexity meaning that we shouldn't be doing like two for loops or like something that iterates twice uh continuously you could iterate through the array like one at a time, but you can't iterate like one based off another, right? <clears throat> and there's a follow-up here. Could you solve it with constant space complexity? The output array does not count as extra space for the purpose of space complexity analysis. So that's going to be quite interesting. And remember what I mentioned before? If they bold it, you better you know, make sure that that is an important element to your solution, right? So now I'm just going to go through how my thought process of solving these type of questions. Um, and then we're probably going to go through a couple of solutions of how we could do it uh, visually. Um, and then at the final, I'm going to code up, code up the final solution, right? Remember, like in most of these problems, we should definitely spend bulk of our time strategizing and think of how to solve this problem on a whiteboard, right? And then we code. Coding part is easy part. The harder part is actually determining what the optimal solution would be, right? So let's go and look at the whiteboard. All right. So when looking at these questions, I was always like to start off with looking at an example, right? So in this example, I'm going to go do something simple, which is the one, two, three, four, one, and two, right? So in this particular input array, um, our solution should, in theory, be equal to uh, 48, uh, 24, uh, 16, 12, 48, and 24. Now, these are, remember what I mentioned before? Effectively, 48 is basically the multiplication of 2 times 3 times 4 times 1 times 2 equals to 48, right? Uh, and for... 24, it's only these guys right here, you get 24. And for 16, you get this segment, right? So to look at this question, let's, let's take a, a step back, right? Um, and say, how did we come up with, 
16, this particular number, right? How do we come up with this number? So when we look at this, it's effectively, um, you're taking the multiplications of things from your left side and things from your right side, right? So if this question were to be something simple as, oh, I could use division, I could simply just, you know, include this three, and then as I iterate through each position, I could just divide by that number, and I'll get my number, right? However, because of that really, really interesting uh, note that they have that you cannot use this uh, division, then we have to be a little bit more creative, right? So one of the things that we know about um, multiplication, right? In multiplication, uh, we know that, um, okay, as you multiply things together, um, you're cool. Like position-wise, if it's going first, like if I multiply one by two or two by one, it's the same thing, right? Position doesn't really matter. Right? So that's a, a unique attribute that you need to know or aware of multiplication, right? So for example, what I mean by that is like if I multiply one by four by two is the same solution as two multiplied by four by one, right? So position doesn't matter. However, um, so when we look at this, uh, if we want to know what number third element, or in, in this case, from zero, one, two, position two, what this is, uh, what we effectively need to know is what's one times two, times four, times one, times two, right? So effectively, it's like, okay, well, why don't I just multiply my left side and my right side, right? So one solution you may be thinking about is like, okay, well, why don't I just create a left side array that keeps track of my solutions as I multiply things from my left side? Um, so in this case, it would be like one, right? And then one times will be two, 2 times 3 will be equal to 6, 6 times 4 will equal to 24, 24 times 1, 24, and 48, right? And then we could do the same thing for the right side, right side, we could simply go, <clears throat> so it's going to be from right side here, it's going to be 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8, 8 times 3 <coughs> is 24, 48, 48. So what do we do here? How do we come up with the number? This will, just so it's easy to see, this is the answer, right? How do we come up with 16, right? What we could actually do here is simply take 2 over here, which is its left side, multiply by 8, which is the right side, right? Because this, this array basically keeps track of, well, what's my multiplication sum as I approach that particular i, right? So the same thing here, as I approach to position 1, my sum is going to be 2. As I approach to position 4, my sum is going to be 8. So therefore, all I really need to do is taking 2 times 8 will equal to my 16. Right, to get this value, which is going to be 16. Same thing for here. For 12, it's just it's simply taking 6 times 2. For 48, it's 24 times 2. Right? So, as you can see in this, we can potentially get a solution from this. Right? However, um, what's the time complexity and what's the space complexity of this particular solution? Right? The time complexity of here would be, you know, O of n. That's great. However, <coughs> the space complexity, we're going to, we're actually creating, it's going to be O of n, but it's going to be, it's not constant, right? Because we're still going to be creating a series of, of stuff here, right? We're still creating like two additional things um, to give my final solution, right? So our space is actually O of n. And remember, it's, in theory, it should be 2n because we're creating two of these, but... In time complexity, I mean space complexity, we just ignore that and call it O of n. So it's O of n, but we're trying to come up with a solution that is um, O of 1 space and O of n time, right? So how can we do that? So remember when our question was given that the answer um, array is not going to be considered as a space complexity thing, right? So what we can actually do is maybe recycle or at least use the answer uh, or output array 
left store initially the left array here and then we adjust that answer array uh, with things that are coming from the right right but in order to know what to adjust it for we probably need instead of creating an array of things we can because we only really need is a leading a variable so we'll, we'll just create a variable right so uh for this example i'm going to show you <coughs> what i mean so for here if to come up with the 24 it's effectively taking your your left array this assuming that this is going to be now your answer array it's going to be now your answer array right so in order to come up with the expected 24 what do we do here remember we said that we're going to take things from the left side which is going to be from itself right and take it and multiply things that we expect um, on the right side for uh here on this particular element which is equal to nothing right so in this case we go and say okay well that's just going to be a 24 right now we move on to here what is this value here right what do we do here so effectively we just need to take two of the 24 multiplied by this value but how do we come up with this value if we don't have the right side array right with this is this is where we go and store it on a variable right so we can say okay my variable here will effectively be equal to a two right that's cool so i'm going to take my self minus one times my variable to get this value great it's now 48 that's going to be 48. I'm just going to point to here. Okay, now what do we do, right? What we could do is like, okay, now that we know that this is a 48, we can actually start updating our variable and multiply 2 by 1. So that's still a 2, right? So we move down into here. Same thing, 6 times 2, 12. Boom. Solve that, change that to that. Now we go move down to here. Okay, well... We have to make sure that we update this so it's gonna be two times four <coughs> goes to eight so we move down here um same thing <coughs> we need to get to 16 all right so how do we get to 16. so to get 16 is the same thing you take basically the two multiply the variable convert this to 16 and so on and so forth right so in this particular solution we actually achieve the most optimal way of solving this right so let's go look at the code and have a further understanding of this particular problem all right let's go back into coding so how do we sol solve that problem in code so first of all i would like to just create this as a function just that up a little bit this all right and here and then I'm going to go and create the output because output array, the new array of size nums.length. I'm going to fill it with <clears throat> the initial variables of zero. So all this really does is you're creating an output array of equal size of nums and I'm going to be filling it with the first value. Um, because I just, you could fill it or leave it empty, it doesn't really matter, it's up to you, but for me I just thought I'll do it all at once. Um, and then we're going to go and create a cache variable, right? This is the variable that's going to be equal to, uh, for now, I'm going to say nums.length minus one. So by default, it's going to actually be the last value of a particular number, of that number, right? So it's going to help us. So what do we have to do first? Well, let's create that output array. Um, that makes sense for us. So for let i equals to one i is going to be less than nums dot length i is plus plus right and here all we have to do is make sure that output at i will equal to <coughs> output at i minus one times nums nums at that ith position right you know why we start at one because when we're at the edge of arrays you know there's nothing on the left side so and basically it means you just put it yourself <clears throat> cool um okay the next thing 
Oh man, this cold is getting bad. Okay, cool. The next thing we got to do is make sure that we're going to have um, to populate that edge case for our solutions array, which is going to be output at i will equal to, well, actually, no, output at uh, nums.length, whoops, nums.length minus one will equal to solution or not solution output uh, output <clears throat> uh, will be output length two. Cool. So all this really does is just saying that <clears throat> I'm dealing with that edge case where I mentioned earlier before, if you're on the rightmost element, it's effectively taking your existing number or your leftmost number because you're taking your left, multiplying your right, since right has nothing, so might as well just take my right element. That's all it's really doing. Now for, I'm going to say let j equals to nums dot length minus two, right? And j, oops, j is greater than uh, zero. J is greater than zero, and then j minus minus minus. Okay, <coughs> all I'm doing is output at my jth position because I start at the second element now, it's going to be equal to my output at j minus 1, right, times my cache variable, right, because that's my cache variable, that's cool, so I, that's my rightmost effectively, and over here we have to make sure we update our cache variable, will equal to cache var times um at j cool and of course after all of this we make sure we return the output oops return output and in theory um this should work but however hmm there's something that we actually missed over here as well if we look at it we forgot the initial value for <coughs> our output <clears throat> so in the output at position zero should in theory be the cache variable because as you accumulate all the way to the left then that's what it should be cool now let's submit and see if this is a solution and bada bing bada boom it wins okay cool Thanks for uh, watching this video and let me know how you like this format. If you like it, uh, please give a sub and subscribe or like and subscribe. Um, otherwise, I'm going to go nurse this sickness and I'll try to pump out more uh, videos in the future. Thank you.